I'm excited because in front of a camera we've got some strange looking wire which is flat about two millimeters wide and pre-tinned but we don't care about that because we have from off-grid Europe bought on eBay for very little money per cell 40 polycrystalline triple bus bar solar cells at up to 4 watts apiece they are specified to be max uh, missing maximum of 20% of a cell so worst case scenario they are 20% less than that and I've finally got something to work with in order to build an actual solar system other than just batteries and the first thing that struck me when I got these cells was how incredibly thin they are you can't really get an idea of how thin these are on most videos on YouTube but I've got a CD and I think my camera might just be able to catch the difference between them there we go that's the solar cell by a C beside a CD it's absolutely ludicrously thin so these are going to be quite hard to work with but I suppose I'll manage however before I can even start to think about working with actual cells I'm gonna have to make something out of these old window glasses I've gotten to mount the actual panels into and uh, I'm going to have to find out some way to remove the old rotten frame from these windows and get the actual glass out so cure time lapse I suppose old brittle glass which probably won't be too much fun to work with but it didn't cost me a whole lot of money It's a pretty clean sheet of glass if you ask me. Uh, the important thing for it to be clean is not to let the light through but rather to allow the silicon that I'm going to use to seal these panels because I'm going to do a sandwich kind of build where I put all the solar elements on this pane of glass and then just put another pane of glass on top of it and put some silicon in between to seal it up and any little dirt and grime around here could potentially damage that seal but the paint came off fairly easily I noticed that using just a bit of water worked a lot better than using any kind of solvent like an ammonia based solvent or isopropyl alcohol or even petrol which was the first thing I tried just water solved the old paint very nicely and there was some just uh, mould and dirt and grime in one end of the pane so with that out of the way let's just try and see if we can put some panels on this thing and see how many we can fit I think I did them off and I think I should be able to make a 5 volt panel out of each pair of window glasses so I've got 8 
sheets of glass in total, which should lend me a good 20 volt system, if I can manage to assemble everything without breaking any panels, that is. So now I've laid out the panels on my sheet of glass in the configuration which would yield the highest energy density. However, this would be 14 panels in series, which would give 7 volts per panel, which is kind of weird. So I think I'm going to disregard the 2 in the end and go with 6 panels in series, uh, 12 panels in series for 6 volts per panel. And in the end, maybe run a 36 volt system or something like that. Since I've only got to 40 panels right now, I'm going to end up with a an 18 volt system and some extra glass in the end. But that leaves me some room. It leaves me four panels that I can <laughs> break without having to essentially put the entire project on hold. So I don't mind that. And it seems from the very limited research I've made that. Uh, 18 volts is a fairly common voltage for solar panels, so I might end up with pretty good compatibility when it comes to charge controllers and so forth. Anyway, the next step in this project, in this process, would be to tab these panels with some tabbing wire. And uh, I tested heating some of this up with my soldering iron, and, and it is pre tinned wire. So it should be pretty easy to actually solder this on. It goes on these lines here and there are some dots on the back we are supposed to solder it to. But uh, we're going to have to see. Again, it's extremely hard to really convey how thin and fragile these things are. <laughs> you can see them just sticking out from the panel there. Glass. It's just incredible. They are literally paper thin. So it's going to be interesting to see how much they'll warp and so forth when I get to actually soldering them. Now, for those who are unaware, the way these panels are built up is uh, you've got uh, these three lines running along the top of a the panel. These are the positive uh, uh, end of it, or the anode of it, and they should all be connected together, which we can prove with a multimeter. But they indeed are just wired up straight in parallel. And uh, the cathode of the panel is the entire underside of it, which is conductive material of some sort. But you only have a few little spots around the back. Where you can actually solder it. I'm not entirely sure, but I would assume that these are the little spots on these panels that are supposed to be soldered. They should all be wired up in parallel as well. And indeed they seem to be. You want to tab them all the way... You want to tab all of them and all the way through even if they're just wired up in parallel because you can see we've got uh, 0.13 ohms there and these probes are pretty low resistance. Uh, maybe they're not. <laughs> but anyway, you've got some resistance between all the this conductive material. So if you don't wire up all the electrodes, well, put tabbing wire all over, you're going to run into some extra voltage drops and decrease the efficiency of your panel. But uh, I really don't see why you couldn't, if you were really extremely lazy and irresponsible, why well, you couldn't just uh, wire it up with a single tabbing wire because no matter where you measure you're gonna get some voltage and I uh, it's kind of weird that it's getting a negative reading on there 
Upon some closer inspection, it seems I just headed back to front. You got your anode around the bottom and your cathode at the top, so your negative or your ground is going to be at the top. Anyway, for tabbing these, I read a lot of tips and tricks on the internet, and since I want to wire up uh, two of these in series with each run of tabbing wire, somebody said that it's a good idea to just wrap the cable around something that's two panels long. And I just happen to have my old ruler here, which happens to be exactly two panels long, so I'm just going to take and wrap some tapping wire around this and give it a go and then I'll just be able to cut it in the proper length right away. Okay, I'll get everything set up. My tapping wire put to a card piece of cardboard instead of my ruler because it just wouldn't wind properly. I could wind an entire packet of wire onto that so I didn't have to cut it. Anyway, I'm going to try and do this like all the YouTube videos say, just gonna just gonna flux these. Line off, and my pen is giving me way too much flux right now. Far, far, far too much. You can probably see it running out over the active surface of the panel. I picked the crappiest. <laughs> panel I could find for this first trial, since it's probably going to be the crappiest job. But the best one, you never know. Two panel length. You just cut it there. Well, there we go. First mistake, I've accidentally twisted the tabbing wire while winding it up to the cardboard. This is going to be very hard to work with. Lesson learned. Since this is pre-tinned wire, it should just be a question of putting it down and soldering it in place. I have to turn my tip right just a little and also get the initial thermal contact to the wire. This is definitely not a the job for newcomers. And I've managed to bend my wire straight to hell. And using this entire winding of wire is going to be absolutely horrible. Now that's the first tabbing wire attached and I must say that was quite the chore. It was very hard to get the heat from the tabbing wire into the actual solar panel. And I think I'll actually run at 350 degrees because they seem to absorb heat very well once it actually gets into them. Surprisingly it didn't deform a whole lot at all and it feels a lot more sturdy. Now that I've got to the wire soldered to it, so that's something I suppose. Mm. Oh, the glass is warm as all hell. I'm going to have to use another surface here because the glass could easily crack from this. Almost too hot to touch. It is too hot to touch. Whoopsie. Okay, so I found it worked a lot better once I got a proper heat insulating wooden work area. And uh, the other last tab didn't take too much work at all. It went pretty smoothly once I got the technique down. I kept. I had to reapply my flux because apparently this stuff dries up pretty fast. This is a Flux Writer brand Flux Pen. I've never quite fancied it. And uh, I also did a bit cheating and just kept adding a bit of tin as I 
went down the path and this is just not my normal 6040 pretty bog standard cheap solder so I don't know why everybody keeps recommending lead free solder I haven't seen any good source for why that should be if it's absolutely wrong to use leaded solar, do let me know, I wouldn't want to be spreading lies, but it uh, adheres just fine and it breaks the ROHS rating, but I don't give a rat sauce about that. So, let's try and solder the back side of this one. So I'll tape the panels together, align them with a ruler, left just a little bit of space in between, and it shouldn't be more than a question of straightening out the wire and dabbing it, dabbing it down with a bit of solder. I don't I'll actually need any extra flux for this. Maybe I will. The big problem seems to be getting the heat into the actual panel. Because the sol tabbing wire is very warm, but the panel doesn't seem to be taking any of it. Just smells of burnt off his tape. Oh, so finally that's those two soldered together. That was quite as easy as I expected it to be. The back side of these panels really don't seem to take too kindly to fluxed solder. It seems the pads suck up the flux and unless you actually clean the flux off it, uh, it won't allow the solder to actually take. The top side was considerably easier in that respect, even though these aren't the prettiest sold jobs they should be alright the cable isn't fallen off at least but the back side well well before we get to the back side let me just show you that it actually does work they are connected up in series and they're putting out 0.8 also so which is what I seem to do under my LED lights. I did hook up my 500 watt light back there and showing it right above it and got a short circuit current of by 2.4 amps which I'm quite happy with. Anyway here is the back side and I am not proud of over these solder joints. They are awful. This is probably the worst one which I spent a lot of time experimenting with trying to solder it, cleaning it off and trying again several times and you can see how it's very dark the pad if we compare it to one that's uh, a little they are white when they uh, come from a factory but they turn dark grey when they get soaked with flux and uh, essentially if you heat it uh, for any amount of time the flux will get in the way of the solder. So you have to be extremely quick when soldering these unless you, unless you actually gain something by using some kind of special special solder on them. But this is about as good as I could get these. That's probably one of the better ones right there. You can see it's actually taken a bit there to the left. And the they are generally just poor quality solder joint, although they don't seem to be going anywhere. So I'll just keep my hopes up of these work and I'll try and do a few more panels. I'm gonna have to dig out some rather crap ones to experiment with.
And there we go. That should be enough tabbed panels to make this single 6 volt array. Now I'm not entirely sure how long that took because I did a whole bunch of other stuff in between but I'd say maybe around 2 or 3 hours in total including a lot of experimentation. I essentially experimented all the way through and I definitely improved my quality and found a pretty good system to do this smoothly and uh, what I found really is that uh, just taking it down there in the end seems to work quite well. I saw some people doing it in the middle but I don't really see the point of that. It's would really make it take longer and uh, when using my iron which is an Oya 2901 it's a 72 watt iron which has uh, the heater built into the actual tip and these are extremely high thermal capacity irons they are far superior to most wellers even with the traditional uh, screw on tip and I found that just pretty much pushing the tip along as fast as I can will yield a, a good result and the faster I go the cleaner it is so going slow just messes it up and if I go take too long it will even start to uh, uh, breaking the sofa joints are just uh, don't want to take if they're done too slowly so go fast go strong I don't have the Temperatures are too high, just 360 degrees or so Celsius, and that worked well for me. I can't speak for how well, well that technique would work if you've got a weaker iron. I know that uh, doing this with my old 48 watt no name iron would have been a definite no go, and I noticed. Uh, I mean, this entire plate is still warm despite not having had anything done on it for many minutes so that speaks a bit about how much energy it really takes to do this and while I was working when I did this one the entire panel all the way through over here became slightly warm and after I was done with it the entire panel was noticeably warm to the touch so there's very good thermal contact between the entire panel which makes sense it's it's such a thin device and uh, aside from that really this is an extremely delicate procedure in that uh, you need to do it from, from experience because just uh, throwing uh, soldering experience in a normal application and evil even uh, abnormal applications I've done fluxless and solderless applications save for pre-applied solder paste that's been through an oven already so I've done some pretty weird soldering but this comes is in a league of its own really and uh, when you look at these uh, joints they really look absolutely horrible it doesn't look like anything's taken at all. It just looks like the tabbing wire is lying loosely on top of a panel, but it really isn't. If I try and lift this and poke it around with, I try with lots of force, and it will not give way. So a couple of times I actually ripped it away you know, by force and. It seems that the tabbing wire makes a thin row of very small solder joints right in the middle of it. So, I don't think this wire is supposed to make an extremely good solder connection. It just makes like uh, some solder droplets, almost like some kind of BGA configuration. Although it's obviously not got balls. <sighs> anyway... I'm not sure if I'm going to put these together tonight. It's pretty late and I'm pretty tired and hungry. I'll probably break something. But 
that'll be it for this. I'll continue tomorrow. And as for these two panels, well, I don't think these two are going to go into an actual panel. I'll save these along with any other scraps I get uh, and leftovers that I end up with. Panel side breaker. So since I decided to go with six volts per panel, I have a four spare panels now instead of a zero as I had originally intended. And the main reason I don't want to go with these is because I still love them so much. They are bent to hell. That is not a straight panel. And that one's not quite as bad, but it's also bent. It's bent that way. So, these could be potential failure points. They could crack a lot easier than the straight ones. Straight ones, at least. I didn't have much problem with the panels warping, actually. Uh, I even had one which had a pre-existing crack, and the crack didn't even expand when I soldered it. These have, for the most part, remained entirely straight. Most of the bend you see there is because they're just lying all piled on top of each other. This is surprisingly fun, though. I was expecting it to be very dreary and boring, but you can kind of try and do it a bit faster, a bit better every time, and it becomes sort of a competition, at least for me. And it's actually a lot of fun, believe it or not, just soldering these tabs.